Good afternoon, Colorado. Welcome to today's episode of What's for Lunch. I'm your host, Larry Hers, and today in studio, I am honored to have Christy from Cuba Cuba. Woo! Welcome. Hola. So we go back a little ways. Uh, quick little story. My dad used to be a volunteer at the Small Business Administration, and when people would come to get loans for their restaurants, they would always put the people with my dad because his son owned a restaurant, so he mm -hmm. had some knowledge. And one of the first people he consulted was Christy, and he had me try and talk her out of getting into the restaurant business, and luckily didn't she work. didn't listen to me. It didn't work. Or maybe not luckily. It worked out okay it worked, for you. It worked you. out good. I'd say, so that was 2001. Mm -hmm. So look, let's start with the, the history of Cuba Cuba. And yeah. you, where are you from? Um, so I'm from Miami. I'm Cuban, uh, of Cuban descent. My parents were both from Cuba. And uh, I moved here. I married a Denver boy. And I stayed in Denver. And I said, this place needs a little bit of my culture. Yeah. And I started looking for restaurants in probably, or restaurant spaces in 1999, more or less. In 2001, I found the two houses. and uh, which, which, which was crazy at the time. That, that location was... It, it wasn't what it is today, that's no. for sure. <laughs> and uh, so they were the two unofficial oldest houses in Denver. And when I walked in, I fell in love with them. I was very young, very inexperienced. And uh, so putting together a historical landmark, I had no idea what it entailed. Um, but long story short, I called my brother Enrique, who ended up opening the restaurant with me. And July 27th, uh, 2001, I opened Cuba Cuba Cafe and Bar in the Golden Triangle. That was my birthday, worst birthday of my life. <laughs> we broke a plate over the steam table. It was, it oh. was just, and you know, when you're first starting out, you don't even know what to do with that. So nowadays something breaks and you know, guys, it's food and beverage, everybody breathe, let's move forward. You know, we're gonna make it work. But when you're so green and you're 27 years old, you really are freaking out. Like, oh, the rice is gone. Oh my God, we gotta shut the restaurant down, you know? So, just, just like me, I started that, Carmine's when I was 27. God. But I think you have to do it at that age with the energy that you yeah. have and sort of the non-experience of life a little bit. It was, it was, for me, it was golden. And I didn't have children and I really didn't have a life in Denver. Gua Gua became my life because I had just moved from Miami. And um, so I just had Cuba Cuba for 10 years, and then we slowly started opening, introducing the the other concepts, which are all Cuba Cuba as well, but a little more casual, because um, Cuba Cuba Cafe sits as the most sophisticated of all the restaurants we own, and then we have uh, the Castle Rock location, um, which is uh, directly inspired by Cuba Cuba Cafe. Of course, okay. not in the two houses, but you know we did as much as we could inside and make it look sexy and fun. And then we have uh, what we call the sandwicherias that all have mojito bars and are located kind of throughout Denver Highland Ranch, North uh, Northfield, DTC, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I brought you some goodies so that you Just can try. Just a little bit. Let's get into it all. Let's start okay. with the drinks since they're all in the close-up. Perfect. What is that? Piña colada. So we do two different piña coladas and everyone comes in for mojitos, right? Because we brought the mojito to Denver. I believe, I say with confidence, Larry might fight me on it, that we brought the mojito to Denver. No, I, and I so it. there it, certainly was no Cuban. When my there. dad said to me, "Put this on the menu," I was like, "Why? We don't drink. I mean, I don't drink mojitos, you know." And he's like, "Just trust me. Put it on." And first day, we're muddling a mojito, and people were like, "Oh, that's kind of cool, you know." And then flash forward, you know, 500 mojitos a night. Now we do them with fruit and stuff. So anyway, more importantly is the piña colada. We slowly introduced, and we just perfected that recipe, and I love it. And in two shops, we actually have a frozen piña colada machine in addition that we created. That's at okay. the cafe in Castle Rock. And that guy? Red sangria. We do it, you know, it's our house specialty. We do red and white. I brought the red, uh, it's just prettier. Okay. And uh, that's our mojito. mojito. I brought a mojito because I had to. Okay. Those are Cuban sodas. Uh, Jupina is a pineapple soda. Materra is a yerba mate. So it's almost like a caffeinated tea. And, uh, and then the watermelon is literally a Jolly Rancher in liquid form. Neat. And uh, I brought those because those are really typical, you know, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, we love them. So I thought it'd be fun to okay. bring it over. And then what do you got over there? Over here we got a couple rums that I was I usually pair with our desserts. I have my I did it with my grandmother's flan. So I brought Zaya, which uh, is kind of the introductory rum when people like rum but aren't really familiar. I like to start them with one of these two because okay. they're more, uh, they're just more easily approachable. And I brought uh, Sacapa, and these are also some of my bartenders' favorites. Mm -hmm. We do like ninety now at Cuba Cuba Cafe. I'm gonna do a ching. Ching. Thanks for coming in. And don't ever shoot it. When these guys shoot it at my restaurant, it kills me. I'm no, like, that's enjoy a, that's that. Sipping. Yeah. That's delightful. Isn't it? Yeah. All right, on to the food. 
start here. Yuca frita, is that where you're going? Sure. Okay. So yuca frita is a root vegetable, um, similar to a potato, a little starchier. Um, we do it boiled, but what I realized is that I also have to be uh, considerate about what people have tried before. And I noticed quickly that boiled yuca wasn't people's favorite. It's yeah. my favorite. It's what we eat at Christmas time. But yuca frita, people love it. So, so we deep fry it. We throw our house garlic mojo, which is our staple marinade, garlic, citrus, and oil over it. Are really these nice. available at both concepts? That is available everywhere now. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Nechong, I kind of brought representation of like every, uh, what we carry at all the restaurants to make it easy. Okay, good. There we have lechon asado, which is our roasted pork. Um, it's uh, slow roasted 12 hours and, and then it's tossed in the garlic mojo as well. And we serve it with rice and beans. And then in some restaurants we have the plantains a la carte. And then in others, like Castle Rock and Guacua Cafe, it comes with. Because in our house, you cannot have anything without a side of plantains. Empanadas, which is a house favorite of a lot of people. Now we do three different, uh, we do th three different styles. We do picadillo, which is the ground beef. Yeah. Tropa vieja, which is the shredded beef creole, or old clothes. And now we do a vegetarian option, which is manchego, the white Spanish cheese, and mushroom. And, and what'd you bring? I brought picadillo. Okay. That's my favorite. And then the habanero aioli, which now we've had to sell by the bottle because people are digging it. Because our food really isn't spicy hot, but we created this sauce to kind of make uh, make the spicy hot people happy. I don't eat during the show because then I'll be talking with my mouth. Closed. Yeah, that's me. No, I'm not. Not pretty. <laughs> no, not the way I eat. It's disgusting. So instead of bringing a sandwich cubano, which I yeah, typically maybe. bring all the time, I brought pan con bife. So that's our steak sandwich. And hands down the best steak sandwich I've ever had. It's my favorite of all the Cuban style sandwiches. So we do um, we do a New York strip that we pound down thin and then um, we bring in our Cuban bread. We actually bring that from Miami because I cannot make it here. I've tried, whatever. So I have it brought in in frozen logs, we proof it, we rise it, etc. cook it off. So that's our uh, pan con bife and it comes with the little picky nicky fries, like homemade little uh, crunchy. crunchy fries, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lettuce, tomato, and then we have the chimichurri also on it. It's not as traditional. I like the pan con bife without it, but we do serve it uh, with the chimichurri on the side for those people that want a little more sauce and flavor in there. I think this might be my lunch right there. That's a oh. yummy. <laughs> this, this two halves, you can split it with me. Right. Another style of pla uh, another plantain, that's uh, the green plantain. So those are mariquitas or plantain chips. And it's, um, I'd say that's our best selling for 20 years at Guacua because it comes with the three sauces. We have our fresh uh, guacamole, our habanero, uh, mango habanero, so it's got a kind of spicy sweet, and our garlic mojo, which is the same as what we uh, put on top of the yuca frita as well. And we have our old clothes. That's Ropa. our propa vieja. Yeah. And uh, I'd say that when a Cub when Cubans come in, Miami people, they're looking for propa vieja, picadillo, which is inside the empanada. These are like home cooked grandma's recipes, which all ours are. Grandma's These are your recipes. grandmother's recipes. Yeah, grandma's or um, my brother's mother. So because yeah. we had different moms, so it's they're all family recipes. We fought over the black bean recipe. Um, I ended up when he left. I ended up bringing my grandmother's black bean <laughs> recipe on. That does was like, cause I love does my. Does he grandma. know that? He, uh, I, I'm sure if he does, he's not happy about it. <laughs> and then that is our flan. Uh, that's my. That's Chela's flan. So that's my grandma, who I adore, and uh, my mom didn't cook. She would hate to hear me say that on, on TV, <laughs> but she didn't. And uh, my grandmother did. She's a killer cook, and her flan recipe is off the hook. I didn't even like flan until I opened Cuba Cuba. And uh, so that's our flan. And uh, and then we pair it with this, and we also do our coffee, which I should have brought, but I did not. Our Cuban I coffee. I did pretty good. Our Cuban coffees. Which is a completely different coffee, right? Than well, it's, you know, we make it with the sugar. Like, I let the sugar sit in coffee, and I put it in containers, and it's almost like... I had to do that early on so that my staff would really understand that you have to get that foam layer on the top. You know, you don't need hearts and all that stuff with the milk, but you need that foam layer, which is, you know, when you're um, mixing the sugar in the coffee, um, that's what it creates. And then uh, it's a really strong coffee. It packs a punch, as you're familiar, and it's like a shot of coffee like this. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed, I do the triple here, which is a colada, and I'm, like the Colorado loves it. They'll do three. For me, I'd be up for three days, but, you know, <laughs> it works. What's your website? Uh, Cuba, cubacafe.com, 
cubacubacafe.com for those of you that speak Spanish. <laughs> You should tell them something in Spanish. You should invite them to come eat your restaurant. Well, bienvenido. Venga a comer con nosotros. Te va a fascinar. It's, it's great food. It's a great ambiance. We've been around for 20 years. Family owned and Cubana operated. I'm in house whenever I can be. And uh, I love what I do. And I'm really grateful that Denver has been so supportive of us, right? And so it's we're, been we're great. We're lucky to have you. You're absolutely an asset Larry, to the Denver restaurant scene. I appreciate that. Um, it's a total vibe, too. Yeah. Like, it's just, you get transported. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, I've never been to Cuba, but you feel like you're in Cuba. That was my goal. You know, I just, the be best compliment that I get from people is when they come in, they're like, oh my God, this is like, I'm in the islands. You know, I walk yeah. in and it's like, the music is playing, you can smell the mint, the lime. And I, I do my best, depending, you know, on which restaurant you're at, to at least give you a snippet of what it's like to have been raised in my culture, which is great, you know? I'm going for this. Go no for surprise. It. And I was telling Larry, now we're doing Domino Night on Tuesdays, and we're doing it at Cuba Cuba Cafe, and we're doing it at the Castle Rock, which is starting to gain momentum, which is a lot of fun. So you teach people how to play? Mm -hmm. We have people clue. that teach them how to play. It's so easy. It's okay. so fun. There's a million games, but the one that I play couldn't be easier. Is it like a big deal in Cuba? Like everybody Huge. does dominoes? Huge. Like the national pack. That's what they do here. <laughs> the, the old guys? With a lot of time it. on their hands, that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Thank see you in another you. 20 years. Enjoy. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back for another episode of What's for Lunch tomorrow. Let's eat. Buen provecho. Welcome, Vision. It was good, even though it's cold. <laughs>